to the children's liturgy for the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today we're going to talk about occupations. That's a big word for jobs. Do you know what your mom and dad do for a job? My mother was a nurse and my father was a banker. Um, my husband is an engineer and I was a teacher. There are lots of things out there that people do. They earn money to take care of their family. And by doing a good job at their work, they help society function. Do you know what I mean? We all live in this society and everybody has to take care of something. So we need we need cooks for restaurants. We need cooks at schools. We need teachers at schools. We need, we need priests to help us at church and we need teachers to help us at school. We need nurses and doctors. What else do we need? Right, we need firefighters to keep us safe. We need police officers to keep us safe. Crossing guards to keep us safe. Oh, there are so many jobs. Factory workers, um, bus drivers, airplane pilots. These are jobs that people have to keep society running. Today we're going to talk about the jobs that some of Jesus' friends had before they became followers of Jesus. So let's begin with a prayer. Loving God, you call on all kinds of people to serve in your kingdom. You even call on little children. Help us to do everything you ask of us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Now let's light our candle and get ready for our greetings. What do angels look like? You might think, well, they have wings and they have little gold rings around their heads. Some of them are big and some of them are small, but do we really know what angels look like? No, we only know what artists have drawn to show us what angels look like. But in today's first reading, the prophet Isaiah tells us what angels looked like to him one day when he saw them in a vision. Let's listen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I had a vision of the Lord. He was on his throne high above, and his robe filled the temple. 
flaming creatures with six wings were flying over him and shouted to each other, Holy, 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 Lord all-powerful, the earth is filled with your glory. As they shouted, the door of the temple shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Then I cried out, I'm doomed. Everything I say is sinful and everyone around me is sinful too. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord all powerful. One of the flaming creatures flew over to me with a burning coal that it had taken from the altar with a pair of metal tongs. It touched my lips with the hot coal and said, this has touched your lips. Your sins are forgiven and you are no longer guilty. After this, I heard the Lord ask, is there anyone I can send? Will someone go for us? I replied, here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm today is, In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. With all my heart, and in the presence of angels, I will sing your praises. I worship at your holy temple. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. All kings on this earth have heard your promises, Lord, and they will praise you. You are so famous that they will sing about the things you have done. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. Did you notice something important in our first reading? God was surrounded by wonderful angels but God wanted a human being to come forward and help with a special mission. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us about a mission God gave Jesus' first disciples, a mission to preach a very important message. What do you suppose that message was? A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I told you the most important part of the message and you believed it. That part is Christ died for our sins, as the, as the scriptures say. He was buried, and three days later, he was raised to life, as the scriptures say. Christ appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. After this, he appeared to more than 500 other followers. Most of them are still alive, but some have died. He also appeared to James 
and then to all of the apostles. Finally, he appeared to me, even though I am like someone who was born at the wrong time. But it doesn't matter if I preached or if they preached. All of you believed the message just the same. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The special message of Jesus' apostles was the good news about the resurrection. Now, in today's gospel, we're going to learn how Jesus first met three of his apostles, Simon Peter, James, and John. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was standing on the shore of Lake Genesaret, teaching the people as they crowded around him to hear God's message. Near the shore, he saw two boats left there by some fishermen who had gone to wash their nets. Jesus got into the boat that belonged to Simon and asked him to row it out a little way from the shore. Then Jesus sat down in the boat to teach the crowd. When Jesus had finished speaking, he told Simon, Row the boat out into the deep water and let your nets down to catch some fish. Master, Simon answered, we have worked hard all night long and have not caught a thing. But if you tell me to, I will let the nets down. They did it and caught so many fish that their nets began ripping apart. Then they signaled for their partners in the other boat to come and help them. The men came and together they filled the two boats so full that they both began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this happen, he kneeled down in front of Jesus and said, Lord, don't come near me. I am a sinner. Peter and everyone with him were completely surprised at all the fish they had caught. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were surprised too. Jesus told Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will bring people in instead of fish. The men pulled their boats up, up on the shore. Then they left everything and went with Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. So in today's gospel, Jesus had a crowd of people who wanted to hear him teach. But they were along a seashore. So if you can picture it, maybe the beach sloped down towards the lake. And the people were all up here and Jesus was down here and, and he couldn't see everybody and they couldn't see him. And so he asked one of the fishermen if he could sit in his boat and move the boat out a little bit into the water. And then you can imagine that Jesus was sitting in this boat in the water and the people were all up on the shore and they could see him and he could see them and they could hear him better because sound travels better off of the water. And so now you have a picture of the people all on the shore and Jesus is teaching them. And he's sitting in the boat of a fisherman. And Jesus and Peter hadn't really met each other before. This was just a convenient boat for Jesus to sit in. But after Jesus taught, he wanted to thank the fishermen for letting him use his boat. And so Jesus didn't have any money to pay him with. So he thought he would help him with his fishing. Now the fisherman, Simon Peter said, Oh, well, we fished all night and didn't catch anything. But if you want me to, I'll put my net over. And so he did. And he caught so much fish. He almost ruined his boat and ruined his nets. So he had to call his friends over. And his friends are the, the sons of Zebedee, James and John. And so they came over and they helped him bring in these nets full of fish. And when you fish with a net, you just pull, keep pulling the net up and the fish tumble into your boat. And they filled both of their boats until their both boats almost were, were sunk. And they were amazed. The generosity reminds me of that gospel that we had several weeks ago about the wine. When Jesus changed water into wine and there was so much wine and now there are so many fish. Yeah, it's a lot. And Jesus said, don't worry, don't worry. You're not going to use your nets much anyway anymore because I'd like you to come with me and instead of catching fish, you'll be catching people. What did he mean by that? He meant that they were going to help him bring people to the Father. Teach people about the love of the Father and bring the people to God. And not just a few, but lots of people. So many people like fish so many fish that they were filling the boats to sinking. So many people will come to God through Jesus and these new friends, Peter, his brother Andrew, James, and John. What was their occupation? Fishermen. And Jesus changed them into people who would bring in more people to know and love God. Why was Peter suddenly afraid of Jesus? Well, he had fished all night and hadn't caught anything. And now with Jesus in his boat, so many fish, this is a miracle. This is amazing. And Peter didn't feel that he was worthy of it. Just like Isaiah in the first reading today, when Isaiah realized that he had had a vision of God and all the angels, and he said, I'm not good enough. I'm a sinner. But 
the angel came with the hot coal and burned his lips with it and said, you are chosen by God. And so Isaiah said, send me, I will spread your message. That's what Jesus said to Peter. You are worthy. I have chosen you. Come, follow me. Oh, boys and girls, are you ready? Because God has chosen you. We are going to spread his message and bring all God's people to the Father. And now let's have our profession of faith. I would like you to say, I believe in God to each of these statements. I believe in God the Father Almighty who made the world and loves everything in it. I believe in God. I believe in God, the beloved Son, who became human, suffered, died, and rose again from the dead. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who fills the hearts of the faithful with the fire of God's love. I believe in God. In today's gospel, Jesus invited Peter to help bring people into God's kingdom. One important way to bring people to God is through prayer. I would like to have you respond, hear us, O Lord, as we pray for these people. For our Pope Francis and our Bishop Douglas and all priests and deacons, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For our President, Joe Biden, and all leaders of the world, that they will bring peace and understanding to people. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Let's pray for our parents and our friends. Hear us, O Lord. Now let's pray for people who are cold and hungry Hear us, O oh Lord. And now let's pray for people who are sick, people who are afraid, people who don't know where their next meal will come from. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O oh Lord. And now let's pray for God's beautiful earth and the universe in which we live. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O oh Lord. Now, can you remember some of those things we prayed for today? The Pope, the Bishop, priests, parents, teachers, hungry people, cold people, people who are afraid. The reason I wonder if you can remember them is because they could use our prayers all week, not just today. Try to remember them when you say your prayers this week. And now, let us finish with a prayer. Loving God, you want everyone you made to live with you in heaven one day. Help us be good fishers of people, just as St. Peter was. 
so that heaven will be full of all the people whose lives we have touched. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the hands of Christ reaching out to those in need the face of God for all to see We are the spirit of hope We are the voice of peace So go make a difference in the world Go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the world Go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the world So let your love shine on Let it shine for all to see Go make a difference in the world And the Spirit of Christ will be with us as we go Go make a difference in the world Go make a difference